Nice one. Wow. Yeah, there were a couple points where I forgot words. Did it seem like profound silence? <laughs> I don't know. Hi, I'm Marty Judah. Welcome to the 13th floor. Today we have Catherine Feeney, all the way from Portland, Oregon. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you're in New Zealand for uh, the first time for a tour. That's how right. Are, how are you finding the country? What do you think? I'm really enjoying it. The weather has been a little rainy yeah. since I got here, which is too bad because it was rainy in Portland as well, uh, as yeah, it often Portland is. Portland <laughs> is notorious for that. Yeah, but it I think it's going like to clear home. up. Come on. Yeah. I do feel very, you know, yeah. I know people have been incredibly um, warm and uh, welcoming, so I've had a really nice time. And so what far. made you decide to come down to this part of the world? Well, it's kind of a twisted tale. Um, you know, everyone wants to come to New Zealand ah, after yeah, they see the Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. I'll have you know that I came here before those I, movies I, were I even thought I believe you. I believe you. And... Um, a friend of mine um, had met a band called The Bolins in Portland because they were over in the States playing, though they're native Kiwis. Um, and my friend, they invited my friend to go on tour with them. Her name's Mel and she has a band called Marrow. Um, and so she was scheduled to do that, but then um, was invited to join a very successful band called Other Lives that was touring Europe. And it turned out she couldn't do these dates. Um, so. I just sort of said like, hey, can maybe they want another American songwriter to support them on these dates. Um, and they were open to it, never having met me or having met me very briefly. And so I managed to find a ticket I could afford and just hopped on a plane cool. and here I am. So you're doing a bunch of tour dates around? Yeah, we have 13 dates all together. We played in Auckland already and we played in Matakana at the market and we played in Fungare yeah. at the Old Stone Butter Factory. Excellent. So you're going to do a few songs for us. Yeah. And one, the first one that we're going to hear is, you mentioned to me that some of your songs have political yeah. inspiration and I'm wondering yeah. if uh, this one is directed at Mr. Trump. It's called Why You Running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, That's a good so, point. <laughs> thank you. So what's going on over there anyway with the politics? Oh, for folks who don't know, you were involved with the Occupy uh, Wall Street protests and got yeah. arrested a, a few years ago for that. So yeah. you're kind of paying attention to all that stuff. You, you must yeah. be freaking out what's going on. I mean, it's pretty surreal yeah. to have... Donald Trump, Trump on one end of the spectrum and Bernie Sanders on the other end of the spectrum. Bernie Sanders is the most liberal candidate that's run, you know, since Carter probably. And um, if if Carter was even as liberal, You're probably going back to Eugene McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Trump running, who I don't think conservative the word is the word for him. It's like <laughs> he's, total insanity, he's, racist, he's in a, like yeah. you know. <laughs> All by himself. In yeah, he's little. definitely in his own category. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's been really exciting in a certain way to see someone like Sanders, who calls himself a socialist, which is usually very very scary to Americans, um, to see him gain such popular support. Um, and I, to to be honest, I feel like Occupy Wall Street, sort of that public uprising and that sort of like welling up of public opinion about like you know corporate money influ influencing um governance i think that has laid the groundwork f for for a candidate like sanders yeah. um i mean obviously there are so many factors that play into sort of like a political landscape and a and a, and a population um and their openness to certain candidates but um i'm I, i'm really excited on the one hand and really frightened on the other hand, because I'd love to think that Trump is not a viable yeah. Everybody candidate. keeps saying that, but he just keeps going. Yeah, it's he keeps insane. going. But I know what you mean. I, I can't stop watching the debates and all, all the coverage. Yeah. It just seems it's the best television on television at the moment. So Yeah, but it's like, like we're talking about a country that 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 elected, you know, Bush Jr. twice. Yeah. So I just so can't rule possible. out the possibility yeah. that, and and not to mention the sort of like, Gore, Bush, mm -hmm. debacle, yep. you know, with the hanging chads. I mean, I, <laughs> to be honest, I was so disillusioned with the with the 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 sort of you know Democratic Republican system at that point that I was like, ah, well, probably won't make that much of a difference. As much as I liked Gore, yeah. and then we invaded, yeah. you know, yeah. um, 
Iraq and I was like oh I think that made, made a big make difference, a difference yeah. actually quite a big difference so right. yeah I'm, so going I'm back really to the song to why you're running is that a political song or is it um something else it's no it's a song about God okay um my husband and I have um, my husband became a Christian a few years after we were married and we sort of had a lot of conversations about God and ongoing just exploration and I um, I grew up kind of loosely in the Catholic Church and um, and you know had a relatively positive experience but but didn't sort of choose to pursue it in my adult life and um, have been reintroduced to a more broadly Christian church through my husband um, when we moved to Portland, Oregon. And um, yeah, th the, the song just sort of like reflects some aspects of our conversation, I guess, but in a, in a sort of, in a metaphorical way. Cool. All right, well, let's give it a listen and we'll come back and talk some more. Okay, sounds good. Or smell or see 
You wish that you talk seriously. Cut my neck, boy. Spill my lifeblood if you must. Still, I'm laughing. Oh, how you cloak your power lust when you let go. They'll take my hand, my mother, father. They rule this land And all that's been And all that's planned So why are you running? Why are you running when you can't hide? All right, we're back to Catherine Feeney and your instrument of choice is the ukulele. Why is that? Um, I bought it, I, I didn't buy this uke, but I bought another uke in England one time because we were trying to approximate a mandolin part and we didn't have a mandolin and a uke was cheaper than a mandolin. Um, so then we just had it around and I started writing on it um, and found it to be a really compelling instrument. So, I mean, part of it that was compelling, part of the reason it was compelling to me was just because it was different than mm -hmm. what I had been playing, which was guitar for a long time. Um, but I feel like the, it just has so much possibility for dissonance that's kind of pleasant dissonance. Um, and I've really enjoyed playing with that. Um, and it's very small, so it's uh, easy to bring to New Zealand. <laughs> so is this the only instrument, or did you bring a guitar as well? No, no, I just brought this. Just this? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool. But the Bolins have a guitar, so I can uh, do both. Yeah, we, we just had uh, another American trio in town called Reverend Peyton's Big Damn Band, yeah, yeah. and he had um, a whole melange of different instru homemade instruments, and one of them was a three-stringed guitar oh, wow. made out of, with a, like a cardboard box, and it sounded amazing. Yeah. He, he, he had the bass going with his thumb on one string, mm -hmm. and then the other two, he was like playing slide guitar. It was That's just like cool. oh, things you can do with two or three or four strings. And yeah. Who needs all those six strings? It's overrated. It's pretty astonishing, yes. yeah. Okay, so we have another song we're going to hear from you called Against You. Yeah. And what can you tell me about that one? Um, Against You is a really personal song. Um, I had a friend, um, and um, we didn't exactly have a falling out, but we had a sort of situation that left me feeling like um, betrayed and upset um, and it's about that I guess and it's about um, wanting to have the strength to forgive um, but not quite finding it yet okay well let's give it a listen and we'll come back for one more I'm sorry I turned against you I'm against you still My heart wants Just to forgive you But it ain't changed my will Living with you I saw you cruel and kind I saw you love and I saw you lie I know you tender and sweet I also know you 
the dangerous kind So I'm sorry I turned against you I'm against you still And my heart wants just to forgive you But it ain't changed my will I'm living with you I got to know you well The damage that's under the factual story you tell And I wanted to reach out my hand to keep you from the pain my wanting wasn't enough to keep you from inviting it over again So I'm sorry I turned against you Sorry I let you down I don't want to be strong enough just to love you Maybe in time, maybe in time I'll learn. All right, we're back with Catherine Feeney. And we got one more song to do. Um, you mentioned the song we just heard, Against You, it was written about personal experience. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what kind of drives your songwriting, or is it a different uh, array of things? What yeah. Kind of you go on? I think when I was younger, it was primarily, um, you know, relationship and personal experience. And certainly that still um, is part of what inspires songwriting for me. But... Um, I also have been really inspired by books I've read recently and by, um, you know, sort of broader, more external issues. Um, I read a book called The New Jim Crow, which is about um, the mass incarceration in the United States. As you probably know, um, the United States has more people in prison per capita than any other country in the world. Um, and a great majority of those people are um, poor people and people of color. Mm -hmm. um, and the New Jim Crow is sort of about the racial bias in the criminal justice system. Um, and it was a really groundbreaking book. I read it a few years after it came out, but was still completely blown away by the information that it contained and by the it's just succinct and sort of um, elegant way that um, the author was able to put it across. Um, and that inspired a lot of songs on my most recent album. Ah. And your most recent album is with a gentleman named Chris Janitis? Janitis, right. And yeah. who is he and how do you guys work together? He's a drummer. Um, he's a very talented drummer. Um, he's also based in Portland, Oregon. And we met, I was playing a show um, a solo show and he just kind of we were speaking after the show and he said hey you know I could really hear some things I've just gotten back from Thailand so I'm a little out of practice but if you want to um, get together and play I'd love to do that and um, I didn't have a drummer at the time so I said sure um, and from the moment we started playing together it was just like whoa this guy is different he's incredibly reverent he's an amazing listener um, but there's something more to, there's like a, there's a, it almost feels like he has like a spiritual approach to playing the drums. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not like, he's not someone who would necessarily be able to communicate that in words, but the way that he plays the drums, you just hear it. It's like. It speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah excellent. Yeah. You have to bring him along with you next time. I you know, come. I'd love to. Yeah. But uh, we do have one more song, yeah. and before we talk about that, we just urge folks, if they're seeing this while you're still in the country, to, to get on out and see you guys. Yeah, uh, we have 
about 10 more dates. Yeah. Um, tomorrow night is in Auckland um, at the Morning Dawn. That's what it's called, right? Uh, the Golden Dawn. Golden Dawn. Golden yes. Dawn. Sorry. <laughs> um, and I don't remember where all the other dates are because yeah, I'm still right. learning the it's names. It's on the internet. We'll, we'll cities, post them on the website. It's on, they're up there. So, <laughs> okay. So the last song we're going to hear, I Don't Know If I Am. Yeah. What can you tell me about that one? Well, that one um, was sort of tangentially um, inspired by the book that I was I, talking about okay. earlier um, by Michelle Alexander. Um, after reading The New Jim Crow, I became really interested in maybe trying to connect with people in prison who were writing and um, translating their poetry into music. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that I didn't, I, it wasn't easy to find a way to do that. Um, obviously, um, prisons are not that easy to get into <laughs> if you're not a criminal or not, if you're not, they're easy to get into if you're poor <laughs> and in the wrong place at the wrong right. time or, you know, selling pot. Um, but uh, harder to get into when you just want to have an inter interaction right. with the prisoners. Um, so I found this organization called Write Around Portland, um, and they ha host writing workshops in prisons and other sorts of detention centers, um, really trying to give a voice to people who might not otherwise have a creative outlet. Um, and I um, was hoping to kind of, um, I was working with someone in the organization to kind of connect directly with some of the writers in their program. Unfortunately, that didn't end up working. The kind of warden um, didn't approve um, that exchange happening. But um, I just found a poem in one of their anthologies that I really loved. And I don't know the situation of the author, and I haven't been able to find her. Her name is Kira, and she wrote a, a really beautiful poem. Um, and I built a song around her poem. Cool. All right. Well, give it a listen. We'll urge people to come out and see you. Hopefully, you'll Sweet. be back again. Yeah. And thank you for stopping by. Thanks for having me. funny alive and wise they say I bring everyone that I meet a big smile but they also say I make bad choices I listen to the foolish voices I don't I don't know if I can I don't know if I am I don't know if I am They say I'm cute Kind on the eyes What they don't know is I don't love myself So in the night I cry They say I'm smart they say I'm funny If I'm so smart, tell me why did I, why did I steal that gun? Oh, they also say I make bad choices I listen to the foolish voices I don't know why I ran I don't know if I can I don't know if I am I don't know if I am They say I'm fun And I thought that it would be too When in reality It was the dumbest shit that I could do they say I'm a good girl Who got given life in a bad, bad world I 